sa guna nirguna now we've spoken about the gunas before so you can see there's sa and nir as two prefixes sa guna nirguna so nir we sh maybe we've recognized that prefix from nirvana so nirguna means no gunas and sa guna means with gunas now what now, if you haven't heard me talk about the gunas before, or you've forgotten when I talk about the gunas, you might be thinking, what's Tom going on about? But the gunas are the three energies. And it's very, and just as we talked about the, a triad of Maya, you know, um, Jiva, Jagat, Ishvara, as a triad, and what you are is prior to that, or beyond that. The three energies, tamas, rajas, sattva, are the three energies of maya. The three energies of maya. So this is a different way of categorizing maya. All the categories are of maya. All the categories are of maya. So saguna means with energies or with we in this sense we can say with attributes it's usually translated as with attributes and without attributes so saguna and nirguna usually are words related to brahman you've got saguna brahman and nirguna brahman nirguna brahman means brahman or the absolutes without any attributes and that's nirguna brahman and then saguna brahman means Brahman with attributes. To put it into the language I usually use, attributes here refers to objects. Because Maya is objects. Objects are things you perceive. Right? So, Saguna Brahman means Brahman with Maya. With objects. And Nirguna Brahman means Brahman without Maya, which is the pure consciousness, devoid of any objects, pure being. This is your true self, Nirguna. Now, when you pray to God, in, in the Upanishads, it says, May Brahman protect us. May Brahman look after us. May Brahman keep us safe from harm. May Brahman protect the teacher. May Brahman protect the, the student or the seeker. This is, we're, who's going to protect us? It's going to be Saguna Brahman. Brahman with attributes. Ishvara. The God we are praying to is the God with attributes. He's, in, he's going to help us, support us through the teaching. This is Saguna Brahman, Brahman with energy, with attributes, with the gunas. But what we truly are is prior to God. God being Saguna, part of Maya. We're prior to Maya. We are Nirguna Brahman, which is the true Brahman. Now you mentioned ajata, a j a t a. Ajata means literally means uncreated or unborn, uncreated. There are several different creation theories you'll find in Vedic literature. This is a creation theory. It's classified as creation theory, but it says there was no. There's no creation uncreated, no creation. Jata means creation. Ajata means no creation. It means nothing ever came into existence at all. To put it into kind of like an English phrase, nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened. This is ajata. The view, the Sanskrit word for view, or doctrine is Vada, V A D A, Vada. So this is Ajata Vada. 
Ajatavada is the view that nothing ever came into creation. When you are fully realized as Nirguna Brahman, you realize nothing ever existed. This is Ajatavada. There are different Vadas, different viewpoints in Vedanta, different theories, different perspectives, different ways of talking about reality. But in the highest reality, the ultimate truth, nothing ever happened. Ajanta cannot be taught, apart from to describe what it is, it cannot really be taught because even to teach it implies that you are here and the seeker is here. So if you are teaching Ajanta Vada, there's a direct contradiction. So it's not something you can teach directly. You can explain it, but through explaining it, you are also destroying it because um, you are, it, it, it implies that there's a creation. Ramana said the highest truth is Ajata Vada. No creation. And it's also written in, in several of the Upanishads. And also um, Shankara said it as well. Gaudapada said the same thing. It's the same thing as realizing what you are for the self. The self was is unborn. And there's no Maya at all in the self. Creation means Maya. Maya means creation. So to say there's no creation, Ajata means there's never any Maya. So this causes a lot of confusion, these kinds of teachings. People say to people who come up to Ramana and this Sagadatta Maharaj and say, hang on a sec, if this doesn't exist, how come I can see it? How come I can touch it? I can feel it. It appears to be here. And then the typical answer given is investigate. See if it exists. When you look, you realize, you come to realize eventually, when you realize yourself, that it doesn't exist. Maya never existed. So it's not something that's possible to understand. The general approach I take, I think the general approach Ramana took, I think, is that rather than trying to teach Ajata, he said, he, his approach was do self-inquiry. Rather than trying to wrap your head around something that is impossible to understand, do self-inquiry and then you'll get the direct experience yourself. Instead of talking about the destination on the map, use the map, go to the destination, and then you don't need the map anymore. You don't need to talk about it anymore. You'll be there. So get the direct experience, Aparokshanabhuti, for yourself. 